start recording any moment now. Good morning and welcome to our Ash Wednesday service, which marks for us all the beginning of Lent. It is a first for us because not only is this the first live Zoom service that we have recorded uh, with participants and congre congregants as well, it is also the first time that any of us, I think, has um, offered the imposition of ashes, as we call them, remotely, uh, virtually, um, in this rather strange time in which we're living. So I hope that um, those of you who are watching, whether you are uh, participating now or you're watching on YouTube, have some ash or some oil ready so that you can ash yourselves at the appropriate moment. And I'd very much like to thank Andy and Sue and Sheila, Tim and Janet for assisting me in bringing this service to you. And I pray that through these words, reflections, prayers and the ashing that you will feel blessed at the start of your Lenten journey. So now we bring ourselves before God body, soul, and mind. We meet in the presence of God. Who knows our needs, hears our cries, feels our pain, and heals our wounds. God of our days and years, we set this time apart for you. Form us in the likeness of Christ, so that our lives may glorify you. Amen. Be with us, Spirit of God. Nothing can separate us from your love. Breathe on us, breath of God. Fill us with your saving power. Speak in us wisdom of God. Bring strength, healing and peace. Brothers and sisters, since early days, Christians have observed with great devotion the time of our Lord's passion and resurrection and prepared for this by a season of penitence and fasting. By carefully keeping these days, Christians take to heart the call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel and so grow in faith and in devotion to our Lord. I thus invite you in the name of the church to observe this time of Holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. Let us pray now for grace to keep Lent faithfully. Holy God, our lives are laid open before you. Rescue us from the chaos of sin and through the death of your son, bring us healing and make us whole in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now have our three readings. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom. A day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. 
Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord, your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God? Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, Where is their God? For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict, and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness, even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquity. Creating me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways so that sinners will turn back to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God. You who are God my Saviour, my tongue will sing of your righteousness. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O oh God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart you, God, will not despise. May it please you to prosper Zion, to build up the walls of Jerusalem. For the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ 
according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like hypocrites for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not soar up for yourselves treasure on earth, where moths and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now a reflection on those three beautiful readings. So here we are again, having digested our pancakes, we come to Ash Wednesday in the beginning of Lent. And what's Lent all about? Well, our readings have no doubt it's about repentance. Our medieval counterparts would have donned sackcloth and ashes as a sign of their contrition. And the ashes that we use to make the sign of the cross are an echo of that practice. Does that conjure up for you a picture of an angry God that we should appease before his vengeance catches up with us? Hmm. The word for repentance in, Greek, in the Greek Testament is metanoia. It's not principally concerned with the past, although it does express the idea of a change of heart, a returning from one's sins, but it principally looks to the future. It's about turning back to the path that God lays out before us. Even so, should we be making a big song and dance in public to express our contrition? Well, Matthew seems to think not. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. Have you ever come across a group of people all showing off and vying with each other about what they're giving up for Lent? See what I mean? Jesus tells his followers to do their good deeds in secret. Go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. So what are we doing here today? 
if we ought to be expressing our regrets in secret? Well, perhaps when you feel the need to make a change in your life, you may need to make some sort of visible commitment, a concrete commitment, shall we say, and show yourself that you really mean it. If you have something in your life that you want to change, perhaps you say to God, this is my commitment and this is the sign that I really mean it. And receiving the sign of the cross is about as good a commitment as one could possibly make. And does God forgive? Well, Joel seems to be in no doubt about that. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. So what is it that you want to change and how will you express that commitment? I once heard about a Bible reading group who each decided upon what they wanted to change in their lives during Lent. And then they brought something with them to the next meeting to represent that commitment to change. One woman brought a Bible and put it in the middle of the table and explained that her Lent commitment was to read the Bible more conscientiously. Another brought a, a paper and a pad of paper and a pen and explained that his mother was lonely and enjoyed receiving proper letters. So his commitment was to write to her each week. Next, one man put a large smooth stone in the middle of the table. No one could guess what his Lent commitment was, so he had to explain that he intended to lose a stone in weight. He felt that God was calling him to be a fitter man. Well, it was more imaginative as a contribution than the next item, which was a bar of chocolate. I'll leave you to guess what the intention was there. But lastly, Perhaps it is the changes that we lay before God in secret that have the greatest value. Psalm 51 talks passionately about what God desires of us. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Perhaps that is the essence of Lent. Amen. Thank you, Sue, for giving us some amusing but also heartfelt illustrations of our Lenten journey to reflect upon. We come now to a time of um, pre penitential prayer and there are all sorts of things that we are going to be asking our good Lord to deliver us from. So I shall read each sentence um, carefully and there'll be a short pause between so that we can really allow those words to sink into our hearts. Let us now call to mind our sin and the infinite mercy of God. God the Father, have mercy upon us. God the Son, have mercy upon us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy upon us. Holy, blessed and glorious Trinity, have mercy upon us. From all evil and mischief, from pride, vanity and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, and malice, and from all evil intent. Good Lord, deliver us. From sloth, worldliness, 
and love of money, from hardness of heart and contempt for your word and your law. Good Lord, deliver us. From sins of body and mind, from the deceits of the world, the flesh and the devil. Good Lord, deliver us. In all times of sorrow, in all times of joy, in the hour of death and at the day of judgment. Good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your birth, childhood and obedience, by your baptism, fast and temptation. Good Lord, deliver us. By your ministry in word and work, by your mighty acts of power and by your preaching of the kingdom. Good Lord, deliver us. By your agony and trial, by your cross and passion, and by your precious death and burial. Good Lord, deliver us. By your mighty resurrection, by your glorious ascension, and by your sending of the Holy Spirit. Good Lord, deliver us. Give us true repentance. Forgive us our sins of negligence and ignorance and our deliberate sins. And grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to your holy word. Good Lord, deliver us. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Make our hearts clean, O God. And renew a right spirit within us. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, in a moment I will invite you to mark yourselves with ash or oil, as a sign of the spirit of penitence with which we shall keep the season of Lent. God our Father, you create us from the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes and oils may be for us a sign of our penitence and a symbol of our mortality. For it is by your grace alone that we receive eternal life in Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. I'm now going to ash my forehead and I'm going to invite you to do the same as I say these words over us all. Remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. Turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. Amen.
the Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offences for the sake of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And a final blessing. May God the Father, who does not despise the broken spirit, give to you a contrite heart. Amen. May Christ, who bore our sins in his body on the tree, heal you by his wounds. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who leads us into all truth, speak to you words of pardon and peace. Amen. And may the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and giver of life, be with you, with those you love, and those you struggle to love, today and always. Amen. Amen. I pray you a blessed Lenten journey. <laughs>